So when you just enter into the world of online business and digital marketing, you have almost definitely been building a web page. So it's just the natural thing that you do when you first start with online business. And whether you're working with Wix or WordPress or Squarespace or something else entirely, you've probably encountered the idea of a landing page. But what is a landing page? How is it different from your website? How can you do things more efficiently or better with a landing page versus your website? Well, today I'm gonna to answer these questions for you by first looking at the three main differences between websites and landing pages, and then showing you why you actually want both and how to use each effectively. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a marketing strategist, and on this channel, I talk about all the things that you can do to improve your business through marketing, sales, and analytics. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, comment and let me know what you're thinking about as far as the landing page is concerned, what kinds of things you wanna highlight there. Let me know what you were thinking at the beginning and how maybe that changed by the end. I would love to know or give you some advice on your landing page. Just shoot it up and, and ask me. But until then, let's get started. Right, let's start off really quickly by defining each of these. So a website is your entire site. It's your entire brand online. You're starting with your homepage, which gives general information about you, your product or your service, which then leads people into a bunch of different places. It could be your blog, it could be your product pages, it could be some uh, lead magnet opt-in form, a bunch of different places that you can go to from that website page. A landing page, on the other hand, is a very specific page. It's a page with a specific purpose. Most often you're building a landing page because people are coming from a specific source. So maybe that's Facebook ads, maybe that's organic search traffic, or something like that and you want to meet the expectations that you built up on that channel so people coming in from a Facebook ad are probably gonna have slightly or very different expectations than people who are coming in from our organic search source maybe they're expecting certain information that they get on one and not on the other a landing page is gonna be there to provide that so just by way of example here let's look at autopilot so autopilot is a website that does marketing automation mostly through Shopify though I think they do it through some other systems as well their home page which you get to just by typing in autopilotapp.com is very simplistic. It's just a contact form and a headline and a picture, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's stylized, but there's not a lot of information there. The landing page, by comparison, comes from a Facebook ad that they click on to get to this page. That's the only way to get to this page. And you can pretty instantly notice the differences here. So there's that header image. There's then a bunch more information. There's steps for what to do with autopilot and how to take actions with autopilot. It's much more tailored towards cold traffic. There's a lot more detail. And while they keep that similar look and feel, so they keep that brand and design image look, they have a lot more information that is tailored to the traffic that's coming from the Facebook ad source. All right, let's talk about some differences between websites and landing pages. So the first one I wanna talk about is the goal or intention of the page. So your website is kind of your umbrella. Everything about your brand generally is stored here, which means that if you have multiple target audiences or ideal customer avatars, which you should have, your website will need to speak to all of them, which means that your homepage is gonna be more general because you can't speak to a 35-year-old mom and a 65-year-old retiree in the same way if you're trying to be extremely personalized. You need to be more general so that everybody who's coming to this page can get a little bit more of the look and feel for who you are and what you offer, what your product or your service is, so they can just know you a little bit before you can get a little bit more specific down the road. Your landing page, on the other hand, is coming from a specific source. So for instance, from a Facebook ad to cold traffic or search traffic that's coming in organically or something like that, which means that the intention of the page needs to be clearly aligned with the source they're coming from and the audience itself. So if the source is search traffic, that means that there was a specific keyword that they entered to come across your page. I mean, there's obviously a lot more to SEO than search traffic and just entering specific keywords. You can check out this video for a quick breakdown of that. But just to keep it simple here, if they're coming from a specific set of keywords, say, you need to make sure that those keywords and the information surrounding those keywords inform people of what they wanted to know when they came across your site in the first place. So you don't want to have keywords out there about dog food if you sell ironing boards, okay? It doesn't mix, it doesn't fit together. And you want your landing page to be in alignment with the keywords that people are searching for. 
The second difference is the number of distractions. So a website is again, everything to do with your brand from your blogs to your e-commerce, your social media and everything, which means that people are going to come in at a hundred different spots and they're going to leave at a hundred different spots. They might not always come into your homepage. Maybe they'll come into your blog and then they'll go to your e-commerce funnel and then they'll go to your checkout and then they'll abandon the cart or maybe they'll come in on your homepage and then they'll go to your about page and then they'll go to your lead magnet and then they'll, they'll exit or they'll take your lead magnet and then they'll go to your checkout. There's a thousand things, a hundred thousand things that could happen here. And it's really, really unpredictable because it's just this playground for kids to come in and run around and maybe even destroy things. Hopefully not. That's not really the goal. But the idea here is that there are distractions everywhere. And so if somebody's coming in to look for a specific thing, it's very easy for them to get distracted and leave the pages as a result. On the other hand, the entire point of a landing page is to get them to take an action. Now, maybe that action is sign up for my newsletter or download this ebook or Hey, buy this. That is absolutely an action. But the point of the page is to tell somebody you are here to take an action, which means that the number of distractions is or should be extremely low. You don't want people to click off of this page. You want people to move down this funnel and take the action that you want them to take most often a purchase. Okay. So a great example of how to do this would be virtualtourpro.com. You should go check that out. And what you'll see is there's no menu at the top. There's no, Hey, check out these YouTube videos or go to my channel or anything like that. There is just, here is the product that I offer. Here are all of the amazing benefits you're going to get out of it. Please stay interested and engaged. And then here's how much it's going to be when you buy it at the bottom. So what you're doing is you're reducing that urge to click around the site and move all over the place, get distracted and leave the site completely. Okay. We're moving the number of distractions. Okay. And you are keeping people as focused as possible on taking the next action that you want them to take. And then the third difference I want to talk about is audience targeting. So I kind of touched on this in the first one. The idea here is that your website is going to encompass your entire audience. So you probably again have multiple target audiences. Maybe you've got 35 plus women with kids. Maybe you've got 55 plus men who are retired. You've got college level education, et cetera. These are very general targets, but the idea is that your website and your homepage cannot primarily focus on one without as a result, excluding the others. And if you're excluding the others, they're going to feel alienated, which means they're going to be less interested in what you have to offer. And they're going to be much less interested in engaging with you in the future, which of course means they're going to be less interested in buying. Okay. So it is really important to be as inclusive and therefore general as possible while you're trying to get across clearly what your business is and what you stand for and all that sort of stuff. But the specific nature of that landing page, on the other hand, means that you're speaking to a very specific target. That target could be that 35 plus audience or that 55 plus audience, and they're going to be spoken to differently. So if you're trying to build personalization and relatability into these pages, which is one of the big benefits of having a landing page, you need to be able to speak on their level and you need to have imagery that kind of matches that level as well. You don't need to change your brain colors and the overall look and feel, but you do need to make some slight adjustments so that you can adapt to the people who are looking at this page. So for instance, you might want to have younger people on that have kids. When you have that 35 plus with kids audience, you might want to have pictures of older generation people who are maybe 55 plus who are also working with your products or services for that specific audience. So the idea here is that while it is a little bit of extra work to set up a landing page, because you've got to make these changes, the upside is huge because there's a lot of relatability and a lot of personalization that goes into landing pages. All right. So here is why there's actually no real verses here. You actually want both of these. You want websites and landing pages because there are differences, but those differences can work together for a huge advantage. Okay. It's all about awareness at the end of the day. That's what it really comes down to. And a website and a landing page are just at different levels of awareness. Most of the time, what you're trying to do most of the time when you're pushing people through a funnel and you're trying to get them to make a decision to purchase from you is you're trying to gauge that level of awareness in order to get the right actions out of them at the right time. So people coming to your site for the first time, may be becoming aware of you or your product for the very first time, or they may be slightly a little bit warmer because they found you on social media or through an ad or something. So they're a little bit aware of you, but not hugely aware of you. And the homepage and the website are great for this because it tells that general story of who you are, what you stand for, etc. But as their awareness grows of not only you, 
but how you can be the resolution to their problems, you're going to start to build more intention into your communications with the user. It's kind of this symbiotic relationship. As they get a little bit more trust and understanding of who you are, you can start to ramp up that intention and that push in your communications. And that's really when the landing page comes into focus because now they are generally aware of who you are. And so now when they're coming to your page again, the next time they're coming to get a little bit more information and to be pushed down that funnel a little bit more to learn a little bit more about how you can be the resolution to their problems or how your product can make their life easier or whatever. Okay. What we're really talking about is a funnel here. A website is the general part and then you get more specific with that landing page and just push people further and further down the funnel. And so here's the best part about this dichotomy where a website is fairly static, a little bit general, kind of gives you that overall information. Landing pages are highly scalable. You might think when you first think about this, oh, well, I've got to restructure the page every time and I've got to you know, do everything over, over and over again. That's just a lot of extra effort and work, but that's not true at all. Really what this comes down to is changing a few images, changing the text a bit and adapting it to this new text style to whatever your audience needs and putting it live. I mean, you're, you're talking about after you've developed your first landing page, maybe an hour or two and you can adapt a new page and get that live and you can just boom, 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 boom down the line. You can have a hundred landing pages before you even know it. It's crazy how fast this can happen. So it is a really, really scalable. And that is one of the huge benefits to landing pages is you can get highly personalized, highly specific, and you can do it at scale. So there you go. That should give you a much clearer idea of the differences between a website and a landing page. The TLDR here is that websites are generic, landing pages are specific. That's really what it comes down to. If you have any other questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got or to look at your landing page. I'd love to kind of give you my critique. I'd love to know what you're thinking about for landing pages. Just shoot me any questions you've got about it in the comments. Otherwise, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I'll catch you in the next one.